Tom, welcome to Daniel Defense. Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you, man. Yeah, how you doing? I'm very, very good. Happy to have you guys here. Yeah, thanks for having us out. So uh, I thought what we would do is uh, let's talk about what you guys have new, up and coming for this year. And let's go see the shop floor. And then I thought maybe we'd get to talk a little bit about the history of the brand and how you guys got to where you are now. Absolutely, I look forward to it. Awesome, thank, thank you roll. so much. So this is our first chance to come back and talk to you guys since you've moved into your new facility, which looks massive, by the way. So why don't you tell us a little bit about not just the move here, but also just give us a quick rundown for people who might not know about the Daniel Defense brand as a whole. Absolutely. So yeah, we, we moved into this facility uh, in 2017. Prior to this, we, we had two different facilities. One was a 45,000 square foot. Uh, facility here in, in Georgia, and the other one was a 95,000 square foot facility in Ridgeland, South Carolina. As you can imagine, from a manufacturing standpoint, it's not efficient to run in two different states, right? So we broke ground on this in 2017. Six months later, this was up and running. Um, sales moved in uh, roughly Christmas of 2017, and this is where we've been operating since. We now have a 300,000 square foot manufacturing facility that we call home. Um, you know, and when it comes to the history of the company, man, I mean, it doesn't get any more American made than Marty Daniels' story. Uh, it truly is inspirational. You know, Marty is a, uh, a, an engineer by trade, an electrical engineer by trade. And um, he and Ashley Burns said were buddies and they, they, they started out shooting together on a piece of Ashley's property. Um, and this is kind of where my story fits in. I remember getting their accessories for my pre-deployment guns uh, back in 2006, 2007. Yeah. Um, and at the time, they were just making small, you know, burn set loops and sling loops and, and mounts. Uh, fast forward to 2008, uh, uh, Marty uh, was at the lower level of SHOT Show and some folks from NSW Ukraine came by and said, hey, we want you to, um, we want you to submit for this contract and it was for the RIS-2 rail. It was essentially a free float barrel uh, that facilitated the mounting of a two or three grenade launcher. So uh, Marty submitted. Uh, ultimately ends up winning the contract, uh, but literally, in order to get the contract, had to ask his dad, or his dad offered to put the family farm up as collateral in order to secure the contract. Uh, from that point forward, the growth curve is just exponential. Um, you know, fast forward to 2009, they finally make their first gun. Um, 2010, 2011, moving forward, you know, we introduced the, the V1, the V2, uh, eventually get into the DD-5, so we started shooting 308 large caliber uh, ARs. Um, at most recently, we launched our new our bolt guns, right? And now we're a handgun manufacturer. So, you know, the, the, the growth and, 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 and overall innovation and growth of this company has been just phenomenal, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it, and it's amazing. Uh, super excited to see what the future holds for this company, right? Uh, Marty will say if it, in a gun, on a gun, or is a gun, that's the growth, that's the, the path forward. And I'm just super excited to be a part of that. Yeah, you guys literally bet the family farm on this. It's impressive, man. You can't make a story like that up. Yeah, no, no, that's wild. Well, let's take a couple of pit stops and uh, see how that panned out. Absolutely. So talk us through a little bit about what's going on at this station. Yeah, so at the heart of every Daniel Defense barrel is a quality, or uh, every Daniel Defense rifle is a quality barrel, right? This is where all the work is done. This is our hammer forge cell. Um, currently, we have three hammer forges working from left to right. We've got the original hammer forge that Marty bought back in early 2000. Uh, it's an absolute workhorse. It's still been, uh, puts out barrels every week. Um, and if you look over, we've got a much smaller hammer forge over here that's uh, a little bit more automated and much more streamlined than the original. And then we've got a third one on the other side. So. All Daniel Defense barrels come in as a large piece of bar stock, gets cut down, gets a precision gun hole drilled through it, and it's the only cut that's ever done on the inside of our barrels. So we're not only hammer forging the rifling, but we're also hammer forging the chamber. Uh, okay. So that means you get a much more concentric, longer lasting barrel. Um, and this is this cell is running 24-7, 365, and it just puts out, in my opinion, some of the best barrels in the world. Um, we are starting to automate some of these processes, right? So the machine you're running behind us here uh, is a, a relatively new piece of machinery that basically goes in once the, the, the barrel comes off the hammer forge, it's actually identifying the right chamber depth and then feeding it to the machine to then cut it to the proper headspace. So we don't have to worry about headspace issues after we've already uh, manufactured the barrel. 
All right, so at this point, you know, a lot of folks in the industry are pretty familiar with what hammer forging is, but I think this is a good visual representation of kind of the start to finish from raw material, right? Um, it, this, this is gonna get drilled through the middle. At that point, it gets fed into a, uh, a machine that cuts it to the, the, the contour that's acceptable by the hammer forge, right? Um, obviously, there are a couple other steps along the way where you're gonna see uh, honing and cleaning and QA checks. But ultimately, this is what gets fed into the hammer forge, and three and a half minutes later, this is what comes out, right? So you'll see here in this cross cut, you'll notice that your chamber's been cut, your rifling, your lance, and your grooves are in there, right? Um, this is this is actually the mandrel that's responsible for doing that, and it essentially has a reverse image of the rifling on the mandrel, and then you can see your chamber on the uh, the mandrel, and it sits in there perfectly. So basically, it gets fed to the end of this. And this carbide steel hammer, there's four of these that sit adjacent to one another, pound the material down and mechanically harden the steel, ultimately resulting in a finished barrel. Um, once this thing comes off the hammer forge, we identify the chamber depth. Uh, we press fit on the receiver extension or the barrel extension, I'm sorry. And then it gets fed through one of our four barrel cell turn lines where it'll get all the final uh, finishing touches on the dimpling, your gas port's gonna get caught, you're gonna thread the muzzle, all of those things, and ultimately it comes out in a finished barrel. Um, our current lead time in the building for a barrel from start to finish, so it gets built and then it ends up on a gun, is about 60 days from start to finish, okay? Yeah, so we're here to look at the gantry cell. So this gantry cell is one of the uh, few robots we have within the facility. So what this gantry does, it's actually gonna run 24 seven. It's just turning out the frame inserts for the H9. So it's a very intricate process. However, it can take it from start to complete finish on this one line and it runs 24 um, seven. What that does is it gives us a lot of efficiency within the building to be able to turn out good quality product and maintain constant production 24 hours a day, seven days a week with limited interference. All right, so here we are at assembly. Talk us through the process. Yeah, so this is a relatively new process for us. Um, up till about six months ago, we were running separate lines for assembly. We would run DDM4s and DD5s on two separate lines. Um, uh, one of our very talented uh, women in the armory came up with this concept for an inline assembly. And if, as you go down the line, you'll see everyone's running a very specific operation for each gun. So now we run all DDM4s and all DD5s through one line. And what that does is it increases the overall quality uh, because you're always going to be working the same exact piece every single day, every single time, and you got the same operator doing it. So it's no more shifting back and forth. We all work on a work order of 100 guns of this, and then we work on this one. And it actually has improved our ability to put out more firearms in a single day versus going on to multiple different and kind of shifting every single time. And I'd love to take you guys for a walkthrough so you can see each of these stations. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the actual processes happening right now. Yep. Yeah. 